venerable members of the Mahasangra, dear friends, thank you very much for having invited me to deliver this talk as a last for your kind introduction. The subject that we have to discuss tonight is very difficult subject. The meaning of life. To find out whether there is any meaning or any purpose in our life. First, we must try to find out what is life. Body is not our life. Life is invisible. No one can see the life. Just like atom. Life is related to our mind. Life process mental energies are working together. Body is the shelter, the house. We pay more attention to look after our body, thinking this is our life. The whole life we spend by attending to this body. Decorating, beautifying, eating, drinking, applying all sort of things and adding all sort of gadgets, thinking this is our life. But this is a mistake. Because the body we drop here. We cannot carry anything from our body with us for the next world or for the next existence. Everything, whatever we have accumulated during our lifetime, we drop here. We cannot carry it with us. All our relatives and friends follow up to the graveyard or the crematorium and nobody wants to join with us. They return. But the departed person carries two things called Sukritam and Duskritam. The things well done and very badly done. That means good deeds and bad deeds. Good karma or bad karma. We carry only this much. So the next existence depend on these good and bad action for the karma that we have accumulated. Not knowing this situation, actually we waste our life by paying more attention toward the physical body. So life is not the physical body, it is an energy. How this life was originated? Very controversial and very difficult subject to understand. 
some people say this life was created by God. That's all. Some others say it is not God. There is a universal consciousness. So the life is the unit derived from this universal consciousness. Exist for a certain period, again absorb into the same universal consciousness. This is another interpretation. Some others say life come into existence accidentally, not created by anybody, not planned or conditioned or promoted by anybody. It is coincident. When element, cosmic energies combine together, the mind comes into existence. After that, we regard this as life. Now, this is the interpretation given by certain scientists, free thinkers, rationalists without depending on any religion or God. Uh, that is why I told you this is a very complicated subject. Let us take Adam and Eve created by God. The similar illustration you can find in the Buddha's teaching also, in Agnanya Sutra. God created Adam and Eve. After that, He created provident food, advised them not to eat. Then snake appeared from hell, influenced them to eat forbidden fruits. They become sinners. Because they ate the fruits. Recently, one speaker, when he was giving a talk, on this subject, he said, if Adam and Eve were Chinese, first they eat the snake. <laughs>
when one section disappears, the other section remains. <coughs> Galaxies. In certain planets, there are different kinds of living beings. Always exist. They appear and disappear. So when this world system reappeared after destruction, certain other living beings in other planets we regard them as Devas or Brahmas or God, whatever name that we give, it is immense material. Having seen this earth, two of them come down for curiosity sake to see what it is. When they came down, they had very tempting error. They could not tolerate it. The cream of the earth. So they wanted to eat and to taste. Then they found out it is very tasty, better than durian ice cream. After eating this, what happened? They are hidden craving arrives. Then they lost their miraculous power to go back. So they had no other choice, they had to settle. Then after this craving, various other defilement, mental impurities also started to develop. At the beginning, these two persons have no sex, sex formation, neither male nor female, free from them. When craving and various other mental defilements developed, divided, separated, male and female, uh, then started to create, produce. Uh, this is the Buddhist illustration. There is one important point here. Those who believe that God created and He created provident food, advise them not to eat. The devil influence for them to create temptation after eating they become sinners. Buddhism says, after eating that cream from this earth, around their hidden craving, they have lost their miraculous power. Same origin. Illustrated in different ways. That means, Craving is the main cause. Every existing religion accepts this. Uh, that is the way how the life is originated. Then what is the meaning of this word? Human. Man. Of course, people don't like this word man. Today, they use human or humanity or humankind. No mankind, 
because ladies do like <laughs> why only men so anyway let us use the word man in old english for the old mankind they use the word man what is the meaning of this word is very important according to chinese philosophy the definition is given in this way man or human means one who concern for others that living being is called human you main quality take for instance when you meet one of your friends or relatives during the lunch time or in the evening the way of greeting is very meaningful in malaysia they say sudamakan and that is the way of greeting it is not how do you do that is not very meaningful to us have you taken your food <laughs> that we be concerned about your way of life in india how do people greet us आपकी तबीयत अच्छा है हाउ इज योर हेल्थ दैट इज वे ऑफ ग्रीटिंग दिस चाइनीज डेफिनेशन ऑफ ह्यूमन इज मीनिंगफुल ह्यूमन बींग्स ऑलवेज कंसर्न अदर्स दे आर नॉट सेल्फिश लिविंग बींग बाय नेचर then the western philosophy especially in greek like socrates aristotle they say human means one who can use sense of reason yes they are right human beings are not like animals they use only instinctive power they have no sense of reasoning but we have that means our knowledge our understanding our wisdom we analyze things to find out whether they are useful or good or bad only human beings can do that sense of reason then what is the interpretation given in buddhism i think it is more meaningful gone beyond their language we are called manushya in pali and sanskrit and hindi and malay and all those languages same word manushya manasya usangata one who can raise one who can develop cultivate the mind up to the maximum level that living being is called manushya that is why only a human being can become a buddha a deva or brahma or god 
any other supernatural living beings cannot become Buddha. Because the development of intellect is not there. Only human mind can do that. That is why in Mahayana schools of Buddhism, they say, in every living being, in fact they say in every plant, there is Buddha nature, Buddha seed. That means potentials are there. Every living being can become a Buddha one day if they cultivate all their good qualities and virtues and knowledge and wisdom and beauty. Therefore, we can say that so and so cannot become a Buddha. All of us can, one day, if we need to become the Buddha. This is the real meaning of this word, human or manush. All the existing religions advise people to develop relationship towards God. Chinese philosophy says we must develop our relationship toward the human being. Then we can cultivate all the good qualities and virtues. We can gain many things from other human beings. When we developed our relationship, goodwill, understanding, cooperation, unity, harmony, Sympathy, they are called humane qualities. These things we cannot get from heaven. We have to cultivate. Then radiate towards other living beings. The meaning of our life we can find there. The meaning of life we cannot gain simply by worshipping and praying and offerings or reciting anything. But by cultivating these qualities, virtues, knowledge, wisdom. <laughs> there is a belief that human life is in the center between heaven and hell. Other living beings are not in the center. Only human beings. Why do they say? Because human beings can cultivate their life better than all the other living beings. Then they can experience heavenly bliss easily. At the same time, 
when human mind become cruel, wicked, selfish, crooked, can abuse, misuse, after that humans can behave worse than animals. Because of that crookedness and cunningness. Uh, then easily can experience hellfire. That is why they say so human life is in between or the center between heaven and hell. What is the real meaning of this? These two words, heaven and earth. Heaven means most pleasurable, pleasant, meaningful, useful life. Hell means most unfortunate, miserable life. And this is the Buddhist concept of heaven and earth. In one of his discourses, Buddha has said, only foolish people believe that hell is located under this earth or great ocean If you don't believe what the Buddha said, if you still believe that hell must be under this earth, today the modern equipments are very strong. You can go on drilling and drilling and drilling. You will be landed in America, not in hell. <laughs> A man who was very rich approached the Buddha and said, he has no time to meditate or to observe eight precepts to practice religion, but even then he says, after his death he would like to go to heaven and enjoy his life. <laughs> and asked the Buddha to tell him what to do. Then the Buddha said, Why do you want to wait until you die to experience heavenly bliss? You can experience heavenly bliss while you are living here within this lifetime. This is the Buddhist concept of heaven and hell. So one day, we had a religious forum at the University of Malaya. There were four speakers on four religions. The subject was religious concept of heaven and hell. In my talk, I mentioned, supposing if heaven and hell were closed up, <laughs> What are you going to preach in the name of your religion? As Buddhist, we can preach Buddhism without depending on heaven or hell. This is the way how the Buddha has introduced religious way of life. Because we create heaven and hell according to our way of life. As nobody else to create heaven and hell, we create. We cannot say there are no heavens or hell, not only one, there are many. But we create. If we know how to handle how to make use of this life. 
we know how to create them. If you abuse, misuse this valuable human life, we create hell. In fact, without religion, we do not know what to do with this life. But religion tells how to make use of this life without abusing and misusing. Then what is the purpose? What is the meaning? People believe that enjoyment, indulgence, pleasure give happiness. Can find out the purpose or the meaning of our life. Entirely wrong. Pleasure, enjoyment, indulgence can create more sufferings, more frustration, more disappointment, unsatisfactoriness in our life. So we should not become slaves to flesh. Because of that mental attitude, we experience more unsatisfactoriness. The best advice given by the Buddha is this. You must develop contentment Santutti Paramam Dhan. The highest wealth is contentment. Rich man is not a wealthy man. One who has to develop contentment is a wealthy man. Rich man suffer day and night. Fear, worries, suspicion, insecurity, enemies, disturbances. Is that the way to enjoy life? Always in fear. But the contented man is free from all these disturbances. No enemies, no jealousy, no enmity, no anger. Free, no violence. Such a small mental attitude. Containment. What is this containment? This is enough for me. This is content. But people cannot do that. People want to work hard like day and night like slaves. Accumulate, accumulate, go on dumping and dumping and collecting. For what? To enjoy life. But before that they pick the bucket. <laughs> Nobody to enjoy. Then, worries, blood pressure, gastric ulcer, disturbances, unhappiness. But one who has developed contentment will be free from all these disturbances. The meaning of life we can give by cultivating these good qualities. Don't think that we can find meaning of life by enjoying. Among 
means all these living beings, do you know, human beings are the weakest living beings in this world? Do you know that? You think we are very strong? Can you fight with a rat without using any weapon? Can you fight? You run away. <laughs> you are scared of that tiny creature. You think you are very, you are very weak. <laughs> Why are you scared? Because you have no weapons with you. All the other living beings have weapons. And the teeth of course, we are not poison. We are good. That is why we are scared. Tiniest creatures and bees, they have weapons. Okay. One day I have seen a frog enter into the veranda of our temple. A dog wanted to go and catch this frog. As soon as the dog smelled then the frog went on bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> then the dog opened the squeezed some poisonous juice from the body. After that, the dog never went to a frog. What have you done? <coughs> Nothing. That is why I told you we are the weakest living beings in this world. Do you know the reason why? Is there anybody here who can tell me why we are weak physically or biologically? Please. We were born to this world as human beings without any weapons not to harm other living beings. That is for the development. That is why we say we are cultured living beings, not a wild animal. We are cultured. We were born not to harm others. That is why we have got anything. Then we can radiate our kindness, compassion, unity, harmony, understanding, words, and the living being. These are the human qualities, virtues. Then you can see the meaning of life. But unfortunately, due to our craving, we have developed weapons, destructive gadgets. Today, President of America push one button here. The whole world turned into ashes within half an hour. If I am wrong, please do an ask President of America. <laughs> <coughs> this is called human. This is the danger of intelligence. 
that they misused and abused for destructive purpose. That is why religion is important. Do you know, amongst all these living beings in this universe, only human beings have a religion. Others have no religion. Who discovered religion? It is not that religion came down from heaven or religion is given by anybody. That is the development of the human intelligence and understanding. Animals, of course you can understand. What about Devas and Brahmas? We worship them. But you do not know that they have no religion. There is no particular religion for Devas and Brahmas. When they were human beings during their previous birth, what they have cultivated and developed are still they use. But as Devas and Brahmas, they do not perform any religious activities. They do not cultivate their mind according to religious way of life. One day, Sakra, I think all of you know Sakra, came up and God. He was worshipping. Then his assistant asked, you are the ruler of this particular heaven. To whom are you worshipping? Then he said, ye gahattha punyakara silavanta upasata dhammena dharamposam you do not know that. You worship the Sakra, but Sakra worship you. If you behave as real human beings, if you lead the noble, righteous way of life, if you observe your religious principle, if you fulfill all your duties and responsibilities, your family obligations, if you lead harmless and respectable life, if you support your family in a righteous way, Sakra say, I respect you. Sakra worship you when you are respectable, when you lead a noble life, and this is the value of human life. Devas also respect you. Why Devas and Brahmas always come and pay respect to the Buddha? Whenever they had many problems and troubles, they discuss. They pay homage to the Buddha. Such a valuable human life, due to our ignorance, misconception, imaginations, we misuse, utter wastage. To develop our life up to this level as human being, we do not know enormous troubles and pains that we have taken to cultivate our life up to this level. It is just like climbing the top of the Mount Everest. 
Bueno. To climb this Mount Everest, we can understand the trouble and the pain at the risk of our life. But to come down from this Mount Everest is not very difficult, very easy. <laughs> this is one step wrongly, you will be at the bottom. <laughs> very easy. If we have misused this valuable human life, all your efforts will be wasted. Again, we have to start climbing, climbing, climbing. That is why when a deva in Devaloka or heaven is going to die, and some other devas say, Ito go sugati After your death, you must go to heaven. Sugati. Who says devas in heaven? The idea is become a human being. As human beings, we can use sense of reason to understand. But devas, brahmas, animals, the spirit, ghosts, devils, most living beings have no sense of reason. When we suffer, we can understand. We might have done something during our previous birth or early part of our life. That is why we suffer. While others are enjoying. When we enjoy our life, while others are suffering, we can understand we have done some meritorious deeds either during our previous birth or early part of our life. And then cultivate more and more. But other living beings have no such idea. Other living beings do not know how to mold, how to prepare for the next life. We can use our human intelligence to prepare for the next life. And this is the most important aspect in our human life. We can see millions of other human beings are suffering and dying and starving. Millions of human beings are living without a piece of cloth. <coughs> Millions of human beings are living without any shelter. And millions of human beings are running here and there as refugees because of the war and volcanic eruptions and earthquake. But we are all right. See how fortunate we are. We never consider it. Visit certain countries and see how some human beings live worse than the stray dogs and cats. They do have some sort of security. Who created those humans to suffer like this? For fun? For what purpose? Nobody created their own. That's why I told you, we create our own heaven, we create our own heaven. Those who have not used their human life, it is difficult for them to be born as real human beings.
we cannot blame God or devil for that. We are responsible. In simple language, the Buddha says, we are the result of what we were. We will be the result of what we are. Very simple. If we are happy, that means we have done some good deeds, some ser service to others. If we are unhappy, we have done something wrong somewhere to disturb others. And hereafter, after our death, if there is another existence, that life depends on our way of life today. How we think, how we talk, how we do our things, our work. Every day we are going on molding, 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 molding our next existence. It is not suddenly that somebody come and create it. We are creating it. That means we are responsible for our life. There is nobody else to take the responsibility. We can understand this. But other living beings cannot understand. So the meaning of life we can analyze in various ways by analyzing in this way. The Chinese philosopher mentioned says man is good by nature. A later all sort of corruptions and human weaknesses, immoral activities, they are. That is his interpretation. There was another Chinese scholar, I think his name is Sun Tzu. If I am wrong, please correct me. He says, at the beginning, man is not good. Man means human. At the beginning, man is not good. That is why education is important. We have to educate them, train them, and then they will become good. Now let us refer to the Buddha. He said, Pabhasaramidam dhikkare chittam tanchako adantuke upakkile se upakkile This is the language spoken by the Buddha. At the initial stage, human mind is pure, luminous. Later, when the faculties Senses started to develop. These senses bring external objects and pollute the purity of the mind. So more and more immoral and wicked and cruel and dangerous things we learn later. external influences. Take for instance, if we can separate a baby immediately after birth, bring up in such an atmosphere, environment, 
without allowing this child to see all the immoral, wicked, cruel, dangerous things. That child does not deal all the bad habits, wicked thing, cruel thing, dangerous thing. Because all these things we learn in books. So the religion is important for us to use as a seed to protect this mind, to avoid, to escape all the evil forces that influence for us to be wicked, be selfish, be cruel, be dangerous. Otherwise, human mind can be twist and turn for any purpose. Man who has no mercy or shame, also Chinese philosopher, man who has no mercy, no shame, cannot regard as real human beings. Because these two qualities regarded as humane qualities. If these humane qualities are no more in a man, how can we accommodate them as human? What in the Buddha's advice? He says, before all these religions come into existence, human beings had two governing factors govern the whole mankind shame and fear moral shame and moral fear giri and otta moral shame and moral fear not ordinary shame shyness that you have or fear of this or that this is related to moral or immoral. Through these good qualities they maintain human dignity. Cultivated humane qualities. The religion come into existence after the development of humanism. What is humanism? Through their understanding, experience, knowledge, sense of reasoning, they realize so many things for them to uphold as their principles. Then they alert. These are the duties towards the wife and husbands and children and parents and relatives and friends and the country. They are in the human mind. And these are the things which create enormous suffering. These are the things which create present experience according to their experience. Cultivated humanism. Later, what they have done? When the concept of God develop in the man's mind. They accommodated God into humanism. Later introduced all the 
these principles were given by the God. Let us take kindness, compassion, sympathy, honesty, patience, tolerance, unity, harmony, understanding. These good qualities have not come down from heaven. We have developed according to our understanding and experience. When they invited God into religion, then it will become religion. Earlier they are not religions. Then they say, God has given. Kindness given by the God. Honesty given by the God. What about those who have no religion? They also have kindness. They also have honesty. They also have sympathy and unity and harmony. Who never believe in any religion or any God. They too have human qualities. Not given by God. Not given by religions. Our own development. This is the uniqueness of the human mind. We do not know how to appreciate and how to value this human mind. We become slaves to so-called supernatural power, supernormal power, miraculous power, when we cannot understand things, we take them as supernatural, miraculous. One day we come to know what these things are. No more supernatural. Scientists have discovered so many things in this world which we could not understand earlier. What we regarded as miracles. So according to scientific discoveries, there is no such miracles. They are all natural occurrences. When we cannot understand, oh, we say it is miracle. So we should not surrender our intelligence in that. Try to understand. When I was a small boy, Every time when rainbow appeared, our parents, do you know what is that? That is the vessels dropped by the God from heaven to take water. <laughs> yes, before they experience the rain, after that. All these so-called supernatural powers are like that, our own imaginations. Scientists have discovered all these things. Many more things for them to discover. But only human mind can do that. God has not discovered anything so far. Only human mind. And the concept of God was also created by the human mind. It is important. Anatole France, a well-known French scholar, he is a very wise man. He says, if God does not exist, somehow or the other, we have to create God. Because that concept of God is very important for the human mind. They have fear, they have suspicion, insecurity feeling, to get rid of these things, uh, that concept of God is important. But those who can understand things properly, that concept is not very important. Scientists did not depend on God. Otherwise, they won't be able to discover anything. They use their free mind. The Buddha encouraged us to use free mind not to depend on Buddha also, he said. Don't depend on Buddha to understand what Buddhism is. 
think free. But he has failed in the way how to think free. Human life divided into different people systematically. According to Indian philosophy, Artha, Kama, Dharma, Moksha, Hopi. First, we must work. We must earn. We should not waste our life. Within our capacity, we must do something. Otherwise, we cannot satisfy with our life. That is the beginning. Then comes the second stage. Um, enjoy worldly life. Sensual. Senses are very eager, very keen to experience worldly pressure. If you arrest them by force, without proper understanding, there will be a lot of disturbances. I am not talking Buddhism. This is the way how they analyze worldly life. Experience worldly life. But reasonable way, respectable way, without adapting any immoral or wicked or harmful method, you can enjoy worldly life. Religion also never say it is wrong. Then come to third, Dharma. This word gives so many meaning. Here Dharma means duties, responsibilities, obligations as human beings. By neglecting your duties and responsibilities, if you try to enjoy your life, then life becomes miserable. It will become a failure. You had to fulfill. You hurt your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, your relatives, your friends, your country, the nation. different duties and responsibilities. After fulfilling all these duties, the time has come for you to think of your next existence. Moksha. Your salvation. For so that people say have no paradise for whatever words, but real meaning is salvation. What is the meaning of salvation? Because here we are like slaves, physically and mentally, whole day and night. We have enormous sufferings and worries and disturbances. Whatever we have, we cannot get it. Life has become a burden, nuisance. But we have everything. More than nothing. No satisfaction. By realizing this, we try to find out whether there is any method for us to get rid of them. 
to see the end of all these unsatisfactoriness, unhappiness, miserable situation. Now uh, that is the aim. Now let us come back to the Buddha. If we are not ready to renounce worldly life, all those religions that appeared in India encouraged people to renounce worldly life. Sensual pressure. But in China, they did not encourage. Chinese philosophers say, we should not run away from the society. We must work with the society. By working with them, we gain more experience. We get the chance to cultivate good qualities by associating and working with them, but not by running away. Now see the difference. The Buddha, who has renounced the worldly life, after gaining his enlightenment, how did he preach to advise for those who are not ready to renounce the worldly life? Today, actually, people have mixed up religious way of life. Certain monks also come and mislead innocent people in their teachings and preachings. Very systematically, the Buddha has introduced his preaching. These teachings are for those who have renounced the world life. These teachings are those who are not ready to renounce the world life. So worldly people are trying to follow the monk's way of life. Monks are trying to follow your way of life. <laughs> ah, that is the biggest problem. <laughs> we have mixed up. Here, yeah. by knowing your problems, your difficulties, what the Buddha says. Cultivate these four qualities. Let us start with Uttan Sampada first. The Buddha said, get up. Don't sleep too much. Don't sit down too much. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be lazy. Do something. Do some work. There are certain things that you can do. He encouraged people to work hard. Here you can understand. The Buddha did not preach for everybody. Renounce, give up, go back to jungle. <laughs> there is no such teaching in Buddhism. Again he said, Aramka Sambhata. Protect what you have earned without wasting, without neglecting, without spending for unnecessary things. Protect what you have earned. Kalyana Nittata. When you associate with people as friends, 
you must know who those friends are. Otherwise, you get into trouble. Friends are the most dangerous thing. <laughs> there was a well-known Christian scholar, also in France. His name is Walter. He has a different prayer every day. When he prays, he says, Lord, God, please protect me from my friends. <laughs> <laughs> right. We get into trouble because of our friend. Here the Buddha's advice is, you must know how to choose real friends. By knowing them, associate with them. Otherwise you get into trouble. Samaji Yudhata. You must know how to balance your income, expenditure. Don't go beyond your income to spend for unnecessary things just to show off. After that, you never get into trouble if you follow this method. See, all these advice are given by the Buddha for you people. Again, he said, you have four kinds of happiness. You must have all these four kinds of happiness. Atthi Sukha, Bhoga Sukha, Anana Sukha, Anavajya Sukha. You must have something for you to Think, this is my property. This is my bank account. These are my jewelries. This is my house. This is my land. You must have something within your life. So when you come to know that you have something, the happiness that you gain, confidence that you gain is important for your way of life. See, the religious teacher who has renounced everything advise you to do like this. Many people misinterpret Buddhism. That's why many of those Buddhists actually have no bad bones. People come and mislead the teachings of the Buddha. Then he says, Bhoga Sukha. <laughs> By spending what you have earned, you can enjoy your life. There are people who accumulate, collect property, money, they don't even take proper photos. So steep. <laughs> enjoy your life. But when you want to enjoy, please don't forget your basic religious principle. At least five percent. Without violating, without breaking these five precepts, you can enjoy your life. There are duties for you to fulfill by using what you have. Otherwise, you get into trouble. Ananda Sukha. You must know how to adjust your income and expenditure, not to borrow from others. If you do that, you will lose your respect, your dignity. Always under obligations. Try not to borrow from others. This is the advice given by you. Last one is Anavad Jasuka. That is the most important. 
when we have no guilty concern or guilty feeling in our mind, that guilty feeling disturbs the mind. And they are the ones who are scared to die. Because they know after they are dead, the life becomes miserable. Those who have no such guilty feeling in their mind have no such fear of death. At any moment, they are ready to welcome. Because they can die with hopes and confidence. Many others cannot die with hopes and confidence. So we have to cultivate our life, not to regret at the last moment when we are going to die. Oh, I have done this, I have done this, I have disturbed, I have bluffed and fiddled and cheated and this and that. Cannot die. It's <laughs> scared. <laughs> Sometimes ago, I received a letter from a Buddhist scholar from Australia, David Morris. He has written to me, to some others also, like this. Reverend Sir, I think you will be very happy to know that I died today. <laughs> He has written the letter and handed it to somebody to post after his death. That is why he has written like this. There are two reasons for you to be happy. First thing, I have been suffering from severe sickness. I am 85 years old. I will be free from that pain after my death. Uh, that is the first reason that you will be happy. Second reason, he became a Buddhist later. Ever since that I accepted Buddhism, I tried my best not to violate the five precepts. I tried to uphold the five precepts. If there will be another life hereafter, that life cannot become visible. Uh, that is the second reason that you should be happy. See how they analyze. Uh, we must have that courage to say, I have lived my life in this way. Now I am not scared. I can depart. I can say goodbye to this world without worrying and without fear because I know my next existence never becomes miserable. Now that is the real meaning of our life. One and a half hour. What do you think? <laughs> There are any meanings? <laughs> you better just stop it. Because I know Singapore people are very busy. <laughs> Not only religion, there are so many other things for them to attend. So we can give a few minutes for them to ask any questions.
you all have been given writing materials and there are two um, mics on the floor so please make use of them can we have the first question from members of the floor Positive in the sense that if 
we do the right thing, sacrificing our lives, doing things that are noble. We assume that that is correct and that is a meaningful life. It gives pride and honor to us. But on the other hand, we say we overwork ourselves. We kill ourselves. So it cannot be right either. Life is given two qualities. One, the intellect, the other one, the emotion. What we use intellect, we seek to give honor to them. But emotions give the contradictory answers. People will say, life is short. Why don't you enjoy life? Those struggle too hard, you die. You will have so much money, you can't bring it to heaven. So, this also is the right answer. So where do you get the right answer? But I'd like to ask you a question with regard to what we see from examples from Buddha's life, Jesus' life, Rama uh, Gandhi's life, and so on. These are the people who renounce the world. They are slaves to people. And by so doing, they get respect, they get power. So when they die, they go to heaven like Buddha. They still have a meaningful way of life and to serve people. And by so doing, by struggling, and power of what have you done? They still got spiritual power to give people and to serve people. Now what do you say of this? So you have given another introduction to my talk. <laughs> but you don't know how to question it. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. You have added me to my talk. <laughs> There is one uh, mistake, I think. Please forgive me. You think the Buddha has gone to heaven after he did. <laughs> it is wrong. <laughs> um, the next question is, how is it in Buddhist countries there is so much poverty, misery, crimes and wars in the present century. Have the general citizens of these countries not followed the five precepts? I don't think that question is correct. There are many more countries who are poorer than Buddhist countries. Christian countries, Muslim countries, Hindu countries, and those who have no religion source. Therefore, we cannot bring religion into this because the situation, the formation of the, the country and the environment, way of life. So, uh, the difficulty of observance of the present, it is true. Although we observe my precept few times a day, we date once or twice a day, but we break more than ten times a day. Because there are more immoral, more selfish, and more corrupted activities in this world. So when we are going to mix up, associate, work with them, we have no place if we are going to be very religious. We have no place in that society. People regard us either as fools or mad people. If we do not follow they are way of life. Now this is the situation in this world. But amongst all those people, very, very few people have courage to uphold religious principle in spite of various problems and criticisms and accusations and disturbances. So it is difficult to be good. It is very easy to be bad. This is the nature of worldly life. And that is 
why the Buddha says, the more you exist in this world, the more you have to get involved with bad activities, immoral activities, harmful activities. It is very difficult for you to escape, to avoid from them. Therefore, the meaning of life is when we, you get the chance to avoid, keep away and find out the way how to live a peaceful life without any interference of these activities. Uh, that is the real meaning of life. It's very few people can do this. The whole world is like a battlefield. It's a madhouse. Everybody is selfish. Everybody is cunning. We cannot find a single honest man in this world today. When we address, we say ladies and gentlemen, but when we analyze this world, it is very difficult for us to find out a gentle man. All are gentle, but no gentle man. Now this is the nature of the world today. But if we have courage and knowledge and understanding to uphold at least few noble principles or qualities, it is a great achievement in this corrupted world. Everybody has contributed something to make this a corrupted world. We always blame others, but we never think what sort of thing that we have contributed to make it corrupted. We are also responsible. Thank you. The next question is in the form of a letter. Dear Venerable Sir, may you be blessed with good health. I've always looked forward to the questions and answers session during your talk. Please enlighten me with regard to this. The water that I offered to the Buddha after some time, I noticed some ants were drowned in it every time. <laughs> And what 
is required for a person to renounce life. Why do monks and nuns have to shave gold? <laughs> for lay people, is it alright to have physical beauty? <laughs> I think that question might have come from the girl. <laughs> so they are very much concerned about hair. <laughs> the first part of the question is when all the suitable time, what are the qualities to renounce the world? It's very good question. You should not make up your mind to renounce the world without realizing, considering and understanding properly. Because of your emotion, a certain conclusion can create disappointment later. A man suddenly decided to renounce worldly life, gave up even the clothing also, by using a piece of cloth just to cover the nakedness, he went to the jungle, sitting under a tree and started to meditate. When he was meditating in the jungle, a rat came and started to cut that piece of cloth that he was covering his nakedness. This has become new to him. I think what to do now? And he had the idea as a cat at home. He went home and not the cat. And now the rat doesn't come. But there is nothing for this cat to eat in the jungle. Can't make noise. This has become a nuisance to you. You cannot meditate. Now you are thinking, what to do? As a cow at home, <laughs> milking. He brought the cow and the cow, and every day he milk and feed the cat. That, that is fine. But the cow made noise. There was nobody to attend to the whole day and night. <laughs> Three, he cannot meditate. Then he said, best thing is to go and bring my wife. <laughs> so he brought the whole family, whole house into the jungle. And because of that sudden conclusion, decision to renounce the world, same thing can happen to you also if you decide to renounce immediately. There are many things you have to consider. Without proper understanding, you should not renounce. For a certain period, yes, you can do that. Few months or few years, I want to keep away from all these disturbances and worldly life to have a peace of mind. Well, can train your mind during that period. So, advantage of this renunciation, it is mentioned like this. Sambadhoya Naravasu, household life, worldly life. We can find a lot of disturbances, obstructions, hindrances. Yes, no one is free from it. Rajasa Ayata, all the dirty, immoral, wicked, dangerous things come from this worldly material. Abhoka one who has renounced the worldly life is like a bird in the sky. These birds can fly either this way or that way and the birds never carry anything, suitcase, 
Good brass. <laughs> Vitamin pills. Nothing. Passport. Card, free from everything. They migrate from country to country. These birds never carry anything. No burdens. Renunciation is just like that bird's way of life. Free from all the worldly obligations, responsibilities and disturbances. Then the mind gets the chance to calm, to develop, to gain more knowledge and wisdom and purity. And later this method, this renunciation become the cause for us to find out the meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? Our final salvation. The next question is, can I combine religions like Christianity, Buddhism, Islam into one belief? What is good? What is bad? Please explain as I have three in one. <laughs> You have all the foliage. <laughs> Not necessary to use either Buddhism or Christianity or Islam or Hinduism. These are labels. Use the word only religion. Then you will be free from grudge, discrimination, hostility, and so many problems. Cultivate all the good qualities. All these existing religions have borrowed the good qualities from the humanism that we have cultivated at the beginning. Not created by their particular religion. Not given by God. Not given by the Buddha. Buddha did not create any of these good qualities. He said, I am going to preach the dharma that existed earlier. It is not a new dharma. It is not a dharma or religion created by the Buddha. So dharma or the truth or kindness and honesty and good qualities are not belong to any particular religion. They are not the properties of any of these religions. Because those who have no religions also uphold, respect these good qualities. They also live as gentlemen, noble human beings, without depending on any religious labor. Today people are fighting because of these religious labels. Labels are not important. Try to cultivate good principles, good qualities, without depending on any religious labor.
we never create violence or bloodshed or disturbances. We will be free from all these bad, evil, wicked thoughts if the contentment is there. So that is why the Buddha says, Santukti Paramam Nana. The highest wealth in this world is the contentment. This is enough for me. So simple, yet very meaningful. Um, the next question is, isn't our mental will our weapon? With it, we learn to fight with our hands and religion. Am I right? Use religion also to fight. <laughs> I have mentioned, we have extraordinary intelligence, but disturbed, eclipsed, and deluded, misled, blindfolded. Therefore, many people cannot use their intelligence. Religion is important to remove all these dark clouds from the mind. Not to use religion and get into battlefield. Otherwise, no use of having the religion. Mind is clouded, deluded, misled. Through religion, you can cleanse all these dust and dark clouds from the mind. And the mind becomes clear. Then clear vision, can see things properly, can understand things properly, when these dark clouds are no more around the mind. The next question is, is the eating of garlic and onions and the eating of eggs that are unfertilized Killing life? Sorry, I think this question is not correctly phrased. Is the eating of eggs that are unutilized? And, and um, no, is it alright to eat eggs that are unutilized as well as garlic and onions? Eating of garlic and onion. I spent nearly five years in Benares in the university. There were 10,000 students. It is strictly prohibited for those students to eat garlic and onion. This is an Indian tradition. Later, the religions existed in India accepted this, but the Buddha did not accept. He never uttered even one word about this. But some others copied the Indian belief. So, medicinal relics in garlic and onion, when you discuss with those who really study, you can see these two things can cure so many sicknesses. Thousands of years ago, they have discovered garlic, ginger, pepper, and onion. Medicinal relics. So, Religion should not interfere with this thing. And on the other hand, there is no life. But if, if the conception has taken place in the egg, it is not advisable to destroy it. 
life is there. If there is no life, if conception has not taken place, no harm in all. Uh, that will be simple answer. Next question. Did Buddha believe in the existence of God? When I was in Australia last year, I gave a talk. An Australian lady asked this question. What is the Buddha's attitude towards God? Then I told her, the Buddha has never said in his teaching that there is no God. He never uttered this. His advice is whether the God exists or not, you should not forget your duties and responsibilities. The parable is there. Now you believe in God for your protection. Pray. Very good. There is nobody who can say you are you are bad. You depend on God for everything. But don't forget to lock the door when you go out at night time. <laughs> there is no guarantee that God will protect your house until you come back. Uh, that is the Buddha's attitude toward God.
Then some others ask, how this water of vegetation? Uh, then analysis, oxygen and hydrogen. Can <laughs> <laughs> you find out the origin of the river? Uh, that is why the Buddha says infinite goes round and round and round. End become the beginning, beginning become the end. There is no beginning. Various other factors, sources, energies contribute and changing, 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 changing. It is true. Anamata Bhoyam Vithave Sansaro Upa Kotina Panjayati It is impossible to find out the beginning of the universe or the world or the life. But here what we mention, when the formation has taken place, those two devas who have come down from another planet who existed earlier, Settle down here. Uh, Buddhism teaches in this way. But other religions say God created them at once. Here on this earth. Uh, that is the difference. Venerable <laughs> Sir, if we work hard and have the chance to enjoy worldly things, craving arises. So, how are we supposed to balance the desire? for enjoyment and the need to cut down our craving. Practice containment. <laughs> Short and sweet answer. Venerable, in Buddha's time, science was not as advanced as today, but people seem to be enlightened by Buddha's teachings faster. Nowadays, science is more advanced but people seem not to be able to grasp exactly Buddhist teachings now. What has exactly happened to the human race? I don't think you are right. Vidya Charana Sampanna Among those nine virtues of the Buddha, one particular quality is for the virtues is Vijja and Chara. Here Vijja means science. Chara means conduct. That scientific knowledge and conduct both we can find equally in the Buddhas. Nobody else in this world who had both Equally. Buddha is called Vidya Charana because of it. He mentioned this on many occasions. So far I have revealed only this much what I understood, which is important for you to get rid of your suffering. Yes. He has collected this much of sand on the Ganges riverbed. See the amount of sand that I have in my hand, the amount of sea, sand along the sea. The Dhamma, the truth that I have revealed so far only this one, but unrevealed Dhamma is just like the sand all along the canvas. But they are not very important for you to get rid of your worldly suffering. Your scientific knowledge never support you to get rid of your worldly suffering. Your scientific knowledge never help you to become honest or kind or understanding people. You become more crooked, more cunning, more dangerous, more selfish because of your scientific knowledge. Before we learn this science, we were ordinary devils. 
After learning this science, we have some clever devils. <laughs> we made the time bomb, atom bomb, this bomb, that bomb, besides scientific knowledge. Now this is the advantage of science. That is what the Buddha said. I have to reveal, tell you how to make missile, how to make atom bomb, how to make machine gun. I thought to, by knowing you are unhappy, you are suffering, you are miserable, pave the way for you to get rid of this suffering. But science was advanced, but not real, not important. But those who have discovered atom at the beginning, they thought they can use for constructive purpose. What happened in the end? Use for the destructive purpose just now I told you, within half an hour can turn the whole world into ashes. Now that is the scientific purpose. But scientists have discovered so many things for us to understand to get rid of our imaginations and misconceptions about the world and the universe. So that we are very grateful. But that knowledge is not important for us to get rid of our worldly sufferings. Is the time now? We have plenty of time, Reverend. <laughs> Yes, 
than 15. Can we have this, this last, last question? Last one. Okay. What is Buddhist view on procreation? There is no limit. <laughs> this is up to you. You must know your limit. The contentment. The Buddha never say you can produce only two or three. Also, he never said you must produce. It's up to you. It is not a religious duty. It is not a religious duty. So, it is up to you to decide, be wise and don't wait until you get the green light from religion to see how much you have to produce. Thank you very much sir.